So welcome again to the new lecture of this course, Fundamentals and Applications of Dielectric Ceramics. So, uh, in the previous uh, few lectures, we uh, looked at the structure formation of these dielectric ceramics. So, basically most of the dielectric ceramics are based on ionic bonding of uh, cations and anions. As a result, they follow what we call as Pauling's rules and uh, which are essentially based on formation of polyhedra by anions being bigger, than, bigger ions and cations occupying the uh, interstices uh, between them depending upon the radius ratios. So, we looked at essentially FCC based structures, the cubic based structures and the and uh, HCP packed structures which are the most common ones. There are other structures as well, but these are the most common structures that we looked at in the last few lectures. So, now we move on to the uh, a, a new topic uh, here which is uh, essentially based which, which, which is uh, important from the perspective of properties. So, here we are going to look at what we call as the defect chemistry defect chemistry of uh, basically oxides. So, because many dielectric materials tend to be oxides in, uh, in, in, in terms of their chemistry, defect chemistry plays a very important role because what is defect chemistry is basically uh, most of these materials uh, whether you have AO or A2 O3 variety of these materials they tend to carry defects which are not. So, here we are not talking of defects like dislocations and uh, uh, grain boundaries and uh, uh, surfaces. Here we are going to talk about the defects which are mainly point defects. So, defects basically which are 0 dimensional defects or point defects. So, these defects are very important because these defects when they are present in them they change the dielectrical properties. And these electrical properties essentially are modified, uh, especially the conductivity, the electrical conductivity changes quite extensively and this has very important ramification on the use of these materials. That and this is affected by chemistry, the environment in, with, in which they are used, the chemical reactions and variety of other things. In this few lectures, in next few lectures we will look at uh, a few fundamental aspects of defect chemistry of these materials which can enable you to tailor the properties uh, when you uh, work on them in, in, in as a part of your research or, or industry or wherever you are. So, uh, the books that we are going to follow, I told you the books earlier, but the books that we are going to follow basically so if you look at uh, physical ceramics. by uh, Y M Chiang D P and W D Kingeri. So, this has a chapter on defect chemistry and then if you are interested in deeper aspects then you can look at non stoichiometry uh, diffusion and electrical conductivity in binary metal oxides by per constant P E R per constant okay so, these are the two books that you can look at. Ceramics will fulfill the criteria for this course, this physical ceramics book, but if you wanted to get into details, you will you can go through this non stoichiometry diffusion electric energy by Kopfstein. So, what are these? Uh, now, let us begin our discussion with what these defects are. So, we first begin uh, with uh, what we call as point defects. And these point defects are basically uh, caused by 
deviations uh, from perfect atomic uh, you can say arrangement or stoichiometry okay uh, so these could be you know missing ions these could be interstitial ions these could be uh, substitutional atoms and uh, these could be presence presence of extra electrons or holes uh, these kind of things uh, usually uh, these point defects are are electrically neutral in metals but in oxides they have they are charged and they change the electrical properties quite significantly so what are these so some of these defects are basically sub categorized into ionic defects Ionic defects are basically the defects which occupy lattice positions or interstitial sites. These could be, so examples are uh, vacancies. Uh, interstitials both host or impurity substitutional ions so these are again substitutional ions can be uh, basically impurity atoms or and it could be anticide defects anti site atoms or ions okay so these are some examples of ionic defects the electronic defects on the other hand electronic defects are basically uh, basically they are because of deviations from the ground state So, basically uh, when you have excitation of electrons or holes, so you form electrons, extra electrons or holes in the system okay? and these are deter determined as, uh, de these are depicted as E or H. Okay? So, uh, basically when you have deviation from the ground state, you have excitations. For example, if you excite a electron from the valence to conduction band this leads to creation of electron and a hole you can also possibly if you put in a impurity the impurity if, if the impurity is different charge so for example we, we know in the case of silicon right in the case of silicon when we put phosphorus in it phosphorus the silicon is plus 4 phosphorus is plus 5 what phosphorus does it it creates extra electrons in the uh, and this makes silicon n type and those n type are extra electrons right extra charge that is created these are electronic defects similarly when you put in a 3 plus like boron boron is 3 plus right it creates holes so these are these are basically electronic defects as we call them so before we go into details of uh, this uh, defect chemistry let's first look at the notation the notation is called as Kroger Kroger wink notation So, Kroger Wink notation generally uh, in this case let us say you have a metal oxide as MO. So, M is the metal and O is the oxygen atom. Okay? So, if you have so if you have metal on metal site it is going to be M M. So, this is regular metal site. Okay. Similarly, if you have uh, 
anion on regular anion site it is going to be O O or X X. Okay. The defects are so defects are depicted little differently. So if you have an ion, we can see which is basically oxygen we can see in this case in most cases then this is going to be V O okay? and this could be a neutral vacancy it could be a charged vacancy. So, if it is a neutral vacancy you write it as V O X if it is charged vacancy then you write it as V O dot or V O double dot it can carry one positive charge or two positive charges the oxygen vacancy is positively charged. So, dot represents in this case positive charge. Okay. So, it could be V O x, x will mean neutral, V O dot will mean single positive charge and V O double dot will mean it is a double positive charge. Similarly, a metal vacancy will mean metal vacancy will be V m. Again neutral would be V O x if it is charged then it would be V m dash this will be one negative charge and if it is doubly charged it is V m double dash if it is triply charged it is V m triple dash. So, for example, for A L 3 plus you can have up to V m triple dash for zirconium you can have V m 4 dash for niobium you may have V m 5 dash because their valences are plus 3 plus 4 and plus 5. So, that is how it will change depending upon the. So, and if you have uh, metal interstitial, it will be M i, again it could be M i x, it could be M i dot, it could be M i double dot and so on and so forth depending upon the valence of the metal whether it is completely ionized or whether it is. Uh, partially ionized or whether it is unionized. Unionized will mean it is M i x it does not lead to any extra charges. M i dot will mean it leads to extra charges. So, if for example, phosphorus and silicon was P. So, it would be P i or it would be P dot okay? because it gives rise to basically phosphorus atom is giving rise to one positive charge on the silicon side plus an extra electron. Okay? So, this is how it is it becomes charge neutral right so so if you put a metal for example inside a metal so it may it may give rise to charges or it may not give rise to charges depending upon its ionization energy so it depends so this reaction whether it will take place or not it depends upon the ionization energy of the impurity similarly you can have oxygen interstitial this will be oi and this oi can again be oi x it can be O i dash it could be O i double dash in case of oxygen it can maximum have O i double dash because oxygen has valence of minus 2. If you have a foreign cation foreign cation is generally M f and this M, M f can also take positive and negative charges depending upon where and how it goes okay. and, uh, and there are some other conventions that we will see as we later as we continue in the in the course okay and generally electrons and holes are written as electrons are depicted as e dash and holes are depicted as h dot okay so these the wherever you have x it means neutral wherever you have dot or dash it means charged okay so this is basically the kroger wink notation so, defects are usually represented by writing what we call as defect reactions. Okay. They are sort of chemical reactions. So, the but we need to follow certain rules and the rules are 
first one is that the ratio of cation to anion sites for the host lattice right as per the host lattice is always constant. So, which is basically it is a law of site conservation. Okay. So, if it is A O lattice which means number of A sites is equal to number of O sites you cannot change that ratio you cannot make it A 2 O 3 or you cannot make it A 2 O A O is the host lattice. Then mass balance so mass balance has to be preserved you have to have mass balance whatever goes in has to be accommodated and accounted for you cannot have changes you cannot have disturbance in the masses you cannot have inequality in the masses you have to account for each and everything that comes in and goes out and then we have electrical neutrality in the end to be preserved. So, mass balance has to be preserved, electrical neutrality has to be preserved, solid has to be always electrically neutral, you cannot have imbalance of charges. So, all the positive charges have to satisfy all the negative charges, so that solid is always electrically neutral. So, when you write defect reaction these three rules are holy grail, you have to have site conservation, you have to have mass conservation, you have to have electrical neutrality condition to be fulfilled and that is how we, we write uh, and when we write defect reactions and generally for, from the perspective of uh, teaching uh, we, as we will assume complete ionization. So, in case of oxygen vacancies it will be V O dot dot in case of metal uh, interstitial let us say if it is if it is 2 plus metal uh, then it will be m i dot dot in case of metal vacancy it will be v m dash dash. So, we are taking complete ionization in instead of there is a, there are possibilities you can have incomplete ionization in practice, but for the sake of uh, teaching this uh, module we will consider complete ionization of all the defects. So, let us first consider defects in stoichiometric oxides. So, stoichiometric oxides are basically when the defects form they do not change the stoichiometry. Okay. So, if you have oxide MO the stoichiometry remains as m is to o as 1 is to 1. So, no matter what the defect forms the number of metal ions ratio of number of metal ions to number of oxygen ions remain always similar. So, in this case what might so the, the defects which form in such scenarios you can have cation and anion vacancies. You can also form a cation slash anion vacancies and corresponding interstitials. Okay. You can have interchange of atoms basically anti side defects. You can have vacancies and misplaced atom of same uh, kind of so you can have for example, combination of uh, metal vacancy and then you have metal sitting on oxygen site there is a possibility. So, you have oxygen missing as well as. Uh, so, uh, there are various possibilities which so you uh, so you will have sorry V m plus 
V O does not change the ratio. So, you have m is to O which is the same okay, as parent. You can have uh, V m plus m i. So, metal has left metal site and gone to interstitial site which means m is to O remains the we have done nothing to oxygen and we have done nothing to metal because metal ions are same in number. So, this so, these are various possibilities and we will see how these there is a possibility that you can form uh, interstitials also. So, you might have O i and M i without forming any vacancies you bring in extra oxygen extra metal both of them sit in the interstitial site without changing the stoichiometry. So, many combinations are possible let us see few of them how they exist. So, first of these stoichiometric defect is called as Schottky defect. The Schottky disorder is basically you have this defects is, 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 is basically formation of formation of cation and anion vacancies in stoichiometric ratio. Okay. So, if you have oxide M O for M O basically you can write this reaction as you have 1 M and 1 O. So, you can say you had M at M site and O at O site. Okay. They go out of the system. So, they you can say that this M and this O go. So, M goes out and O go out, they create vacancies at the oxygen and metal site right V O and V M and these vacancies will be negatively and these vacancies will be positively charged. So, this is basically alternatively you can write this reaction as. So, you have changed you have seen that this does this has not changed the stoichiometry for each molecule of M O one molecule has gone out it has created one vacancy. So, you can write this reaction as 0 or null is equal to V m plus V o. Okay. So, this is this generally happens. So, what this means is that both metal and oxygen have to leave the system. So, this generally does not happen in the interior of the system it happens at the surface that is why these defects are usually found because, because the metals and oxygen have to diffuse out of the system and this diffusion takes energy and it is more plausible at the surface than in the interior. So, these defects generally form at the surface. So, basically if you look at uh, a structure it, it looks like so you have let us say this is a lattice let us say you have um, you have these as oxygen ions and let us say you have these as metal ions okay. So, right now this is all stoichiometric right. Now, in the short key defect what will happen is that this will become a vacancy. So, this will become you can denote a vacancy like so let us say this becomes a vacancy this becomes V. So, this was metal this was oxygen let us say. Okay. So, this becomes V O and similarly this metal here it will become V M. So, you have pair of vacancies without changing the stoichiometry. So, M is to O is fixed. Okay. So, this is called a short key reaction and this reaction generally happens at the outer or inner surfaces or at dislocations wherever energetics diffuses permit it, permits it and generally these, these metals and oxygen they diffuse out of the system until you reach equilibrium. 
So, this is the equilibrium defect, you will have some, uh, some of these defects always present thermodynamically in a system, we will do the thermodynamics later on. Um, and these defects are generally preferred when anion and cation are of equal sizes uh, or comparable sizes. So, so, this is for MO, suppose you wanted to do it for Al2O3, you, for Al2O3 you can write a reaction as 0. So, here you can see the stoichiometry is 2 is to 3, so which means you will have 2 vacancies of aluminum plus 3 vacancies of oxygen. So, you can see you have site neutrality, you have mass neutrality, the mass conservation, you have charge conservation, you have 6 of negative and 6 of positive charges. So, you can write this reaction for, so this is called a stoichiometric defect, it does not change the stoichiometry of the system. The, and the materials which show this kind of uh, defects are uh, things like sodium chloride, magnesium oxide, Al2O3, TiO2, many of these materials show this kind of Schottky defects. Second defect in this series is called as Frenkel disorder. Frenkel disorder is basically about formation of, so if you have, uh, it is about formation of uh, uh, metal interstitial and uh, vacancy, so either metal or anion interstitial and vacancy. So, the way this reaction is written as uh, you have 0 V m plus m i or V x plus x i. So, let us say if it, x is doubly charged as well, then you will have V x and x i. So, you will form either metal interstitial or vacancy of metal and vacancy of metal or you will form vacancy of in anion and anion interstitial. In both cases, either this or that, in both cases the stoichiometry is not disturbed because metal has not gone out of system, it has remained inside the system. So, m is to x is same, it is preserved. Okay. So, mass is preserved, you can see there is a site preservation, you have not created any extra site because it has gone to interstitial site, interstitial sites cannot be created or destroyed and vacancy has been created on the metal site itself. So, this happens inside the crystal because nothing has to leave and it happens only when cation. So, inside the crystal and then smaller, it happens in systems with smaller cations. So, things like AGI, AGBR, many halides show this kind of system where uh, this kind of reaction. Okay. So, this is Frankel or anti-Frankel. So, in this case, it is called as Frankel in case of cation and anion and anti frankel in case sorry uh, anti frankel in case of anion and frankel in case of cation so we'll stop here today uh, remaining defect chemistry we'll take up in the next lecture thank you